that have a good look, uh, Greg, because she's so far in front. It's uh, amazing looking down from here, the gap between our leader, who's already got one Olympic gold medal to her name in the 4x200 in Atlanta, and the pack behind. 48 starters, and there is a big group in that pack, and Tormina is uh, within sight now of the first transition. Up over and over. Okay, she's just uh, about to stand up now. 18 and a half minutes nearly for the swim here for the 1.5 kilometers. She is absolutely flying. That is a brilliant time. Takes a look over the shoulder. She rips the wetsuit off. She'll pull it down halfway down to her hips there until she gets to a bike ride. Then she'll rip the rest of it off. She takes the goggles off and the hat off nice and early to get ready. Pumps the air. She's a happy girl. Yes, we know, Sheila. You're a great swimmer. You'll have to get on that bike. Well, it's all in front of her, isn't it? She has to put the helmet on before she can take her bike and the chase pack still not out of the water with 30 seconds now from this when Tormita exited win. the water and you can see that 22 seconds is from our timing spot as Tormina jumps on the bike she'll be on her own yeah, it's very interesting over the last couple of hundred meters of the swim leg Tormina she actually lengthened her lead it's amazing I didn't think that that would happen Hackett third and uh, Harrop fourth off the swim we'll try and find Jones in a hurry Yes, let's look for Jones, because if Jones is in this group, she is. McKeeley Jones is in the group. She's only about five seconds behind Nikki Hackett, Loretta Harrop. She is perfectly positioned. Now, I can see this pack catching up to Sheila Tormina very early in the bike ride. The other one we need to look for is Carol Montgomery, the Canadian who is the run specialist. And she is just coming out of the water now, we believe. But the card's certainly falling in the hand of McKeeley Jones at the moment. She is in the perfect position exactly where she wants to be. Carol Montgomery coming out of the water now and they're about about a minute behind McKeeley Jones and a further 30 seconds behind Sheila Tormina. Sharon Donnelly, the American of the Canadian, along with Montgomery's Carol Montgomery. Montgomery's out of the water, yes. Carol Montgomery's out of the water. Not in a very good position, guys. Oh, look. Now, I can see this race coming down to an Aussie trifecta early on. OK, I might be getting excited, but this is a great day for the Australian triathlon to see all three of those girls in the lead group. I'm very, very surprised to see McKeeley there. Tough hill straight away, isn't it, on the bike? I mean, this would really be hurting. Yes, you can notice that Sheila is actually standing on her shoes here. She still hasn't got the uh, feet strapped into her pedals. She's looking around. She knows it's inevitable that the girls are going to catch up. Well, there's Harrop and Hackett at the front of the chase pack. They're about 30 seconds down, and Tormina it is who leads. And they have six laps on the bike. The Australians are perfectly placed. Down Macquarie Street, and uh, when they come down the bottom of Macquarie Street, it'll be very interesting. They'll be coming down there at about 70 to 80 kilometres an hour, only to uh, rip on the brakes at the end to negotiate a hard right-hand roundabout turn. They'll come through the concourse here and the, and the uh, forecourt of the Opera House, and they'll be... There'll be like five to 10,000 people just around the Opera House screaming. It's absolutely electric. How's the body temperature here? They've got out of the uh, out of the water. The, the water is cold at 17 degrees. A bit of breeze today, but not too much. Yes, that's right. Um, I think that today has been an absolutely glorious day. We've got a wind from the north, actually. If we had a wind from the south, I think it would have been a problem because it's a chilly wind. But the north wind, I think, today is going to be actually effective for the girls. We have had some hypothermia here in, uh, in previous years. 19 degrees, the air temperature at the moment. Just coming up to 11 a.m. in Sydney. So, really, the conditions are about as good as you can get. You can see Sheila Tormina is absolutely flying as she comes down into the Opera House area, gets onto the cobblestones of... The Opera House forecourt shortly, but the fastest part of this course, no doubt about that. And she just stands up a section, uh, a fraction, as she gets onto the brake hoods. Really needs to make sure that she is under control here. Yes, this is a dangerous corner, but not for Sheila Tormina. I think that this corner is going to be very dangerous for the pack because when the pack comes around there and there's about 10 of them, oh my goodness, the pack is there already. I am not surprised to see that. Again, as they come into the Opera House forecourt, the cobblestones here, it's probably the most dangerous part of the course, even in dry conditions, because as they take this uh, right-hander, they're still on the cobblestones. Yes, that's right. The uh, Actually, the wheels, they skip across the cobblestones there. It's not as if you're going around a smooth surface. They do tend to skip, and when they skip, you can lose the back end of your bike quite easily. 
underneath the steps of the Opera House and back out into the transition area. Fransman it is who still leads. Nikki Hackett and Loretta Harrop. Harrop is in second place at the moment. Harrop is there. Jones content to just stroll along in the middle of the pack, the two Americans. Zyger and also Gutierrez and Tormina at the back of that pack as they go back outside. Really, if there's a break to be made anywhere in this course, it is as they go up Macquarie Street. It's about a thousand metres and it's quite a climb. Yes, it is a climb and it's just a, it's a gradual Must grind, I call it. Again. But um, Yoel Fransman is just doing so much work on the front here. I think it's going to really hurt her in the uh, run league. But going up there is that it's a place that they can make time. They can look across their shoulders and see the other side of the road where the other cyclists come down. And that's also a great indication so that they can get up there and put the pace on. So Fransman. It is who leads at the moment. Just getting news from the course that uh, a couple of those girls who came down are getting treatment at the moment. It's not the Australians. We don't believe it's Carol Montgomery. We'll try and find out those athletes for you. As the chase pack that come down into the Opera House area now, you can see the gap. It's 1.20 at the moment, but they have at least another 20 or so seconds before they get through into the transition area. Evelyn Williamson, the New Zealander, on the front of that pack. Number 21. Carla Moreno also there, the Brazilian. 24. On the right-hand side is Sylvia Peppels. Number two is Kathleen Schmidt from Belgium. Gap is widening here at the Opera House as we enjoy the triathlon. I don't think Montgomery's there. I think she's out of it, Montgomery. She must have come down in the fall. Well, she certainly might have dropped off this pack, but she is certainly not in that second chase pack. And we're getting word, I think, that Carol Montgomery might be out. And I'm not sure whether she was a, one of the casualties in the fall or whether she's pulled out at the moment, but she's certainly not in that uh, second pack. There's Nina Ananasmova from... So Sean Bryce, Carol Montgomery and Mariana O'Hata from Brazil are the three athletes that went down. So, well, after going through so much, Carol Montgomery, to get here, she has had a tragedy here today and she will not finish the race. 21-year-old Joel Fransman and 33-year-old Jennifer Gutierrez have made a break. The Australians are starting to chase. We're pretty much deep into the sixth and final lap here in the cycling leg the three aussies now starting to chase out after the two women who've made a break they've probably got about eight to ten seconds on them it was a strong move the german has made most of the running in the latter half of the uh, bike leg and they've taken their chances jennifer gutierrez and yoel fransman gutierrez we can see there looking across one of the three americans in this league group and Fransman, who's the youngest competitor in the race today, 21 years of age. And as we've been telling you, she was fifth here in Sydney in the World Cup. So she is a danger, and so is Gutierrez right now. Yes, well, that's right. I just saw McKeeley, Jones, Loretta, Harrop, and Nikki Hackett come to the front. We've got three very distinct cycling styles. McKeeley Jones, the long, lanky legged girl, she has this beautiful cycling rhythm. She pedals the most efficient and beautiful cycling circles with her pedals. Uh, Loretta Harrop uh, crunches the big gear. She uh, that, that may hurt her in the run, but Nikki Hackett also, a very, very strong cyclist who hunches over her handlebars. Ten she, seconds a gap here between. Uh, the two in front and the pack. We're not all that far away from the transition and this is the uh, the second transition from the bike to the run and those first few steps are gonna be very tough for all of them. Absolutely crucial. They need to make sure they're in the, the perfect position for themselves as they come into this transition area. This gap is growing at about five seconds a kilometer and we've probably got about three seconds, three kilometers remaining in this bike leg little over halfway through it as Fransman and Gutierrez still lead. Well, Gutierrez was seventh in the Sydney World Cup, so we've got two top ten tenors from the Sydney World Cup, and you know, triathlon's a little bit like a marathon. Consistent performances in top ten is easier to say than it is to do. So they are outstanding competitors, the two of them, and Jones, Harrop and Hackett, the three Australians, won't want to let them get too far away. No. Well, they've closed that gap up completely as they come into the final transition. The key here, get off the bike. 
and get the running shoes on as quickly as they can. Of course, the laces are already in and elastic, so races can be won and lost in the next few seconds as they charge into transition for the final time. Fransman it is who leads, but McKeely Jones, Loretta Harrop and Nikki Hackett, the three Australians, are right there with them. Just coming underneath the steps of the Opera House now, and Fransman it is who leads. Transman from Isabel Mouton. That's it was a great transition there. Jennifer Gutierrez, McKeeley Jones in the green and gold. Hackett, Harrop's on her shoulder. Magali Mesmer's having a great transition. This is the T2, the second transition, the bike and the run transition. First out of the area is Nancy Camperent. It's McKeeley Jones that takes it there, the world number one. She's had an absolute blinder of a transition, McKeeley Jones. She won the transition from the swim to the bike and she is now in the box seat as she leads the run 10 kilometers remaining in the women's triathlon and it's McKeeley Jones the Australian in front. McGully Mesmer has absolutely charged to the front. Bridget McMahon her counterpart from Switzerland is quite a ways back but don't, re don't forget that in April she came from a long way back to that second place. So McKeeley Jones it is who leads the women's triathlon in the early stages of the final leg to run. Loretta Harrop and uh, Nikki Hackett are right there with her. American, she was competing in the US marathon trial, as you can see as they go up that hill. And you've been up there, Greg Welsh. It's a, just a short little pinch of a hill, but it can certainly take the sting out of the legs. It can, and the lactic acid will be all built up now in there because they've changed their muscles. The blood from the muscles in the legs are actually flowing up into the shoulders as well now, but they're, they're enjoying a little break going down. But when they go by, past Boy Child Pool, there is a bigger sting, a bigger stinger of a hill. It's around about 50 metres long, and it's actually quite steep. I think that that one there will hurt them more than the other one. What an effort by Harrop, who couldn't finish the race here, couldn't start at the World Championships in Perth, didn't look as if she's up the front as we speak as we go back through the field. But uh, her performance to be here and being... Uh, a contender is just a great effort. Back and is working really hard. So three might turn into four right now. We're about halfway through this first lap of two laps of the final leg in the women's triathlon. And Margalie Messner of Switzerland, third in the World Cup in Sydney in April. Loretta Harrop, a world champion in 99. McKeeley Jones, the world number one. And in fourth placing, Joanna Zyger, the 30-year-old team captain from the United States. It's still a bit to go, but you would think that the medals are going to be in that four. Well, Isabel Mouton and Christine Hock from France are in fourth and fifth. In fact, there is Bridget Brigitte McMahon. McMahon, who's having she... a huge run. So she is in fifth place at the moment, and she is charging home, so don't discount her. And I think Jennifer Gutierrez, too, is there. So they are closing the gap, and it's interesting that the leaders at the moment are perhaps worrying about themselves a little bit too much, and the ones behind have got the opportunity to get back on, and Ziga is there now, and it won't be too long as they come back in towards uh, Hyde Park and College Street here in Sydney that Brigitte McMahon is also in that group, and we will have five shooting for just three medals. Bridget McMahon is absolutely flying. She was around about 12th leading off the bike ride there. She's gone out at her own pace, as did Zyger. Now, interesting to note that Joanna Zyger's wearing a little belt. She's containing those little gel, um, you know, liquids there that they put in, and they contain the calories and the sugars that you need to keep up with. Now, these girls have ran out of their pace, Bridget McMahon and Joanna Zyger. The other three ran out at a breakneck speed, could be detriment to their finish, but Joanna Zyger and uh, Brigitte McMahon, if I was them, I would actually surge right by the lead group at the same time because that would intimidate them and uh, give them a better idea. Harrop, Jones, Messner, McMahon, and with a cap on is the American captain Zyger in fifth place at the moment. I think there's two sections that, that can actually split these athletes to come home for their gold medals. Uh, this is the first one as they round this right-hand turn. This is the hill that's a little pinch. This is the first of two. The second one is past Boy Charlton Pool. Now, if they get to the top and put in a little surge over the hill, and I'm sure Loretta Harrop will, she'll have stiff instructions. Look out for Bridget McMahon. She has a fast finishing leg here, and she could be the one to upset the Australians. Well, take it for facial expressions. Messner looks superb, doesn't she, the Swiss? She 
She has not spent uh, too much on this at all by the look of her. She's just conserved en energy every step of the way and her bike leg was pretty conservative as well. Well, it's at the moments like these that Loretta Harrop will be uh, drawing on all the experience from her training in the Swiss mountains where she's based. She, as we look at Sheila Tormina, who is currently in sixth place and Harrop, who only found out that she was in the team a little over two weeks ago. Of course, McKillie Jones had her spot secured after winning the Sydney World Cup. She's the world number one, Jones. She's won this race the last two years in a row and was the red-hot favourite going in. But the two Swiss athletes, Magali Mesmer, who is again stretching them out in front, and Brigitte McMahon, who closed a gap of about 40 metres after the bike leg through transition to get on to the leaders, as did Joanna Zyger. As Tormina just coming into Woolloomooloo Bay. And they'll go around the corner to the right-hand side past Andrew Boy Charlton Poole. But the Australians are perfectly placed with Loretta Harrop and McKeeley Jones in the front group. Some bright sunshine here, perfect conditions, about 20 degrees in Sydney, massive crowd around the course. And we're not too far away from the finish. The two Australians right at the front. Excitement here in the women's triathlon. Bridget McMahon and McKeeley Jones have singled themselves out for the gold medal run-in. McMahon, who was second here at the World Cup behind Jones. We could have the same Quinella. The former stood up. Jones is sitting on McMahon. McMahon does look strong, but uh, Jones has covered every move in this race, and the favourite is in a great place. Messner is in fourth place. Zyger, uh, third place, I should say. Zyger's in fourth place, you can see there. And Loretta Harrop, the other Australian, is back in fifth. And Nikki Hackett's about tenth right now. But the run is for gold, and it looks like it's come down to the 33-year-old Swiss mum and McKeeley Jones from Australia. It's so important. The inside position will become critical if they are together when they make that last turn. McKeeley Jones out sprinted Loretta Harrop here in the World Cup race in 99. There's a right-angle turn at uh, the very bottom of Macquarie Street as they go into it's about 80 or 90 metres the finishing straight and McKeeley Jones had the inside on that occasion you can see she's just moving to the left of screen to the right hand side there and that is where she needs to be but well Brigitte McMahon is uh, a very experienced athlete she will know exactly what she has to do and after nearly two hours it has come down to these two and McMahon, who raced up to them on the bike, on the, the run leg, she closed a gap of around 20 metres to get there, and then she went straight to the front. And McKillie Jones, who's only just done enough throughout, she looks pretty composed, she looks pretty relaxed. Let's hope uh, she's relaxed enough to sprint to the finish. Yes, these girls are on the edge. They're right on the rivet, and uh, yep. McKillie Jones and Bridget McMahon are... It's third place there, Greg. That's a miss in third place. That's the bronze medalist we think at this stage her Swiss companion is battling it out with Jones for the goal could be a repeat of April could be a repeat of April I would say so Jones just sitting McMahon in front not too far away from the bottom of Macquarie Street here and McMahon she has taken this race right up to McKeeley Jones she hasn't been concerned that Jones is the world number one and the red hot favourite as they come down they really only have around about five or six hundred metres remaining in the very first Olympic triathlon. It's been a race that has delivered everything that you could possibly want for. And McMahon is straining now, and so is Jones. Yes, McMahon's giving it to Jones now. Look at her. She's huffing and puffing. She'll blow the house down today. But I tell you what, look at Jones, composed, professional as ever. She's just on the shoulder. Huge, big, huge roar on the uh, forecourt of the Opera House as they're on the big screen. She's got the face of a winner at the moment, Joan. She really has. We got a great shot of her a moment ago. There's Mesmer in third place. The excitement is just sky high here, as you could imagine, with thousands of Australians lining the streets and just hoping that McKeeley Jones can win this historic triathlon. She's moved up to McMahon now, and the Australian who has done so much for this sport over the last decade is looking ready to pounce and challenge. Just positioning herself magnificently to have that uh, inside running as they come into this final turn. You can see the gap back to Mesmer. She looks like she is confirmed in the bronze medal position at the moment. 
and Jones and McMahon will race for the gold medal. We're going to have a sprint finish in the first ever Olympic triathlon. And nice tight to the wire finish here, but look at McKeeley Jones coming up on the shoulder of Bridget McMahon. Maybe McKeeley knows that from April that Bridget McMahon did close too fast and she needs to be at the front. Who knows, but I'm backing McKeeley in a sprint. They're testing each other now. Mester's in third place. That's what she's looking in front of her. But Jones is testing and McMahon has responded. Jones still looks a bit more comfortable. She still looks as if she's got a chance. McMahon kicks in hard. In fact, she's made the break. Jones must stay with her now. McMahon's a stride and a half in front, and McKeeley can't let her get away. There's an awkward turn coming up, and she must position herself. It's going to be a thrilling finish. We're late into it now. We're around the roundabout. We're about to come down to the the finish and McMahon is a stride up can Jones kick from here McMahon still leads the Swiss has done a brilliant job she has a three-year-old little child at the mum from Switzerland Jones has lost a little bit of contact McMahon's away and McKeeley's gonna have to dig here I don't think she can do it Bridget McMahon looks like she's gonna upset her and McMahon's come away to lead by three four meters from McKeeley Jones Jones digging deep but the 33-year-old from Switzerland, who was second here at the World Cup earlier this year, today wins an historic gold medal. Switzerland first, Jones second for Australia, and it will probably best be Mesmer in third place here. What a race. What a race. It has delivered everything you could possibly want. Magali Mesmer, two Swiss athletes on the podium. She can have time to celebrate her bronze medal performance, and she can congratulate Congratulate her compatriot Brigitte McMahon, the gold medal winner when she gets to the line. It'll be Switzerland first and third, and Australia in silver, McKeeley Jones. She will be slightly disappointed. She shouldn't be. It was a gallant effort. Joanna Zeiger, what a run from her. What a race it's been. She has only had one World Cup start. She will finish fourth here today. Brigitte McMahon, Greg Welsh. It has been a performance deserving of triathlon's first Olympic gold medal. Well, Br Brigitte McMahon came from around about 12th off the bike and she went out at her own pace and she collected her thoughts early on. Loretta Harrop, what a fantastic finish. She's in fifth position today. What a great race. Two weeks of knowing that you're on the Olympic team. What a fantastic finish as the girls, the Australian girls, the green and gold, they embrace at the finish line. A great side and a wonderful side for Australia. Well, we had high hopes that uh, Australia's games would begin with Australian gold. It wasn't to be, but these two Swiss athletes, they enchanted us in Sydney. Wonderful personalities, great flag bearers for the sport and their country. And a wonderful beginning to these games. Sheila Tormina. Well, Sheila, enjoy yourself a little bit more if you can, because she has had a great day. She's had a look around and realised that, uh, well, there's a fair back break there to uh, Christine Hock from France, I think it might be, who will come in in seventh place. But Tormina led early in the swim and had a great bike ride. The Olympic gold medalist has experienced the great thrill of standing atop the podium and listening to the national anthem. Today, she is just enjoying the experience of being at the Olympic Games. Yes, uh, Sheila Tomina, what a great effort as we see Isabel Mouton coming in from France there. What a great result for Sheila Tomina. Nikki Hackett coming in at around about 10th position, 9th or 10th position. We can't tell you right now for sure, but it's a, just a wonderful, wonderful position for her to finish in. A young girl, 21 years old, she's got plenty of time. We think it's about ninth position for Nikki Hackett, about ninth. A great race from her. She struggled with injuries since the World Cup, since winning the World Championship. Big group of supporters from Terrigal. And the two, the three medalists now have the opportunity to celebrate their win. They're in the middle of the transition area. And McMahon can celebrate with her family, her daughter, Dominique. Margali Mesmer, the 29-year-old Swiss athlete also who has been such a wonderful competitor, second in the European Championships last year and now Olympic bronze medalist, Kaomi Niawata from Japan coming through. 48 starters in this women's race. We've lost at least three, including one of the race favourites, Carol Montgomery, who had a crash on the bike in the early stages of that first leg. 
but what a rags to riches rise it has been for Brigitte McMahon. Belgium, really, no one had heard of her before the Sydney World Cup. We dive for the biographies as she dashed to the lead there and ended up finishing second in that sprint. And Greg, you've, she, she made up so much ground early in that bike in, in the run leg that we didn't think that she would be able to maintain the gap, but the sprint to the line was supreme. Yeah, we'll go back to Sydney in April and Bridget did come by. Uh, she was in the finish shoot with McKeeley when McKeeley did win, but she had a fast finish. And that's what I was worried about for McKeeley today, that Bridget McMahon would come on. I think I called it earlier on, but I tell you what, what a gutsy effort from McKeeley, though. She never gave up right to the, you know, in a tight to wire finish, she never gave up. And that's what's so Australian about McKeeley, because she's a gutsy competitor. It was um, a strange race, didn't really go exactly to my plan, but... Um, you know, we, we all came together out there and it all came down to the run and there's some really quick runners out there. Um, I gave it everything. I tried to break a bit on the first lap of the run and then the second again, but I ran out of legs. <laughs> it was great to see the three Australians in the pack together leading throughout the bike. Yeah, that's always pretty exciting. Um, we didn't talk much out there, actually. I had a couple of words to Nick, but um, I knew that they'd be saving their legs for the run and uh, we just had to wait and see what would happen. All right, well done. Thanks. So Loretta Harrop there in fifth placing. So a great run by her, but just out of the medals. What a race it was. So in the end, it was Bridget McMahon of Switzerland out sprinting McKilly Jones, the Australian, and in third place, Magali Mesmer. So it was Swiss one and three, and the Aussies had three in the top ten. April on one, two, three here. It's slightly different order. <laughs> The, the silver, silver medalist, representing Australia, McKeeley Jones. Well, she's slightly disappointed. She shouldn't be because it was a gallant race, gallant in defeat. Did everything she possibly could to take home the gold medal today.